Hey, you doing everyone? Greetings and welcome to today's episode of 8 Bits in the Basement. So what I'd like to do today is to show you the Thompson MO5 once more. Now, this is a system that we've had a look at a good while back. And I learned from my research into it that this is pretty much the French version of the BBC Micro in the UK. And the reason for that is this is the system that most French kids in their schools were introduced to computers using. This is the guy that was in all the schools right across the land. And this particular example of it that I have was used an awful lot. Almost all the keys on it are wiped out from little grubby fingers pressing on them. And also, the plastic on it is a little bit squeaky as well. It's, uh, it's been well used. It's probably been dropped a few times too. But I mean, it works 95% the way it should. But the reason I've pulled it out again is because this system doesn't get a whole lot of love in general and I think it deserves a little more it's a, it's it's a good little system now here in France they're well known and I came across a channel here called Tom MO5 and the guy who runs that channel he's after doing an awful lot of stuff on these particular Thompson computers and in much the same way as I've been running a series on learning Batari basic he has run a series on learning basic for the Thompson MO5 and it's actually an interesting informative little series now it is all in French but I've had a little look with the subtitles on and they seem to be fairly followable so if you wanted to learn a little bit of basic that way it wouldn't be a bad idea to check out his channel now the thing is the reason I'm after pulling this out again is that particular guy he's after writing a game very recently for this system a game which he calls Evil Dungeon. And it's kind of like a type of, well, you wouldn't really call it a dungeon crawler, but it's that kind of, you know, an exploration adventure type thing. So I'm after loading it onto my SD card. I'm after sticking it into the SD drive, which is an SD solution for this guy. And what we'll do is we'll move the camera in a little closer and I'll show you the game run. Okay, just let me stop that there before it flashes off. But as you can see, this entire game is written in French. For the guy who wrote it is indeed French. But what we'll do is we'll translate a little bit of it. It says that we are going to be playing the part of Aligard, the slayer of evil. Well, it's of devils, actually. But the way that I've done it, there's a kind of a play on words with evil. But anyway, your mission is to liberate the agent Nosmoth, who has been detained in the evil dungeon. And uh, the evil dungeon is under the command of Vazigo, the executioner. He's actually the infernal executioner. And we're going to face a horde of demons, as well as number, numerous traps in this evil dungeon place. So, um, yeah, what, we're, what we have with us is our arm, which is the demon crusher. See? La démon écraseur. That, that means demon crusher. This is great. You learn an awful lot of French from this, actually, if, you, if, you know, if, if you're into that. And, uh, and also, of course, you'll need your courage. And it wishes us luck. So I'll just advance it on. But you hear the music. All this music has been written. Well, there's actually two of them in it that made it. There was your man who has the channel came up with the idea of making the game. And there was another guy with him who's a student. And he kind of did some of the programming, but also he... Did the music as far as i know now i hope i'm right in saying that but anyway it says here mm, let me present myself i am vasigo the master of this place so it would it would be fun for me or i would like to crush you like a fly right now but i'm going to play with you instead because obviously he's a bit of a psychopath and so i'm going to give you some advice so it says to start I'm going to make the task a little easier for you. So to change the screen, this while you're playing the game, you can touch any key. So I guess that's what we do here. And it says, Bien, it says, good. It seems that you've understood. So he's already, he's kind of taken the piss of it. But anyway, in the dungeon, it will be impossible to go back. Each of your choices will be definitive for this. I suppose once you've made a choice that's pretty much it you're stuck with it so against my friends your left hand will serve you well so you'll be using your left hand to 
press the key E to shoot, D to go to the right, and Q to go to the left. And it says, why your left hand? Because it's the hand of the heart. You see, there's, there's some yoke where your wedding ring finger on your left hand had a nerve, or they taught back in the day that there was a nerve going from there to your heart. And that was the reason we do the wedding finger and all that. Kind of, but anyway, this is the reason why. And um, it says, why the left hand? Like I say, because it's the hand of the heart. And a little bit of tenderness in my dungeon wouldn't do any harm because he's a bit of a bastard, it seems. And it says here, if you wish to meet me, you will have to cross my, my dungeon or you'll have to traverse mon dungeon, get across his dungeon some way. And if you manage by some miracle uh, to make it to the door of my room, don't forget to knock before you enter. So maybe that's some kind of clue. I don't know. I never got to the end of it. And it says, I wish you a happy death. You see, because he's, he's a kind of a sadistic bastard. Anyway, here we are at the main title screen. So, dare ye enter the dungeons of Daggerath. It reminds me of that a little bit for the Coco, you remember? But here we are. This is our first screen. So this game is entirely written in basic. Now, with the MO5, it's using some form of Microsoft Basic. So what we're doing here, as far as I can tell, all these lines are after being plotted using basic. So we're using coordinates to draw a line from a place to a place. And that's how these brick walls have been constructed, as well as the pentagram there. And then we have a square command or a rectangle command that we can give the points of a rectangle and we can pretty much fill it. But that's how each of these screens has been created. And as far as I can tell, there's a hell of a lot of work after going into it because these screens aren't actually mirrored. If, if you take a look, it's not that we'll do half of it and mirror it. They're different on each side. You see, there's three bricks in the second row of bricks here. There's only two there. You know, it's not done quickly. It's kind of drawn together kind of manually, as far as I can tell. Anyway, as we go through the game, we press any key to move forward, as it said. So each time we press a key, we move along through the evil dungeon. And you see here, every, every so often, this little torch is dispersed throughout the dungeon. I think they're a nice little touch. We've got a little flickering yellow flame here as well. So on we'll go a bit. And you see that things change. So when I originally saw this game online, when he was speaking about making it, I thought we'd be able to go left, right as we wanted to ourselves. But no, like I say, we press any key and it brings us through. Now, this is a part where we're actually controlling our little demon crusher there down the bottom. So what we've got to do is move left and right and shoot at that little demon there at the top of the screen. And as far as I can tell, you've got to hit him like about 10 times, I think, in order to win this little battle. But his placement on screen is completely random. So there's times that sometimes he'll arrive on one end of the screen and then over at the far end and you can't really get to him in time. Sometimes that happens. But anyway, we keep moving on and you can admire the artwork more or less as you go. And Every so often, there's little extra parts that are thrown in. Like we've got a screen here we haven't really seen before where you could possibly go right or left, but it's going to automatically be chosen for us. Every so often, you'll be given a screen like this where we get like a question. Now, I'm not sure is this a play on words where you're talking about the question de croisement. I don't know. But anyway, what we've got here is we've got the seven deadly sins. And it's asking us, which one of these seven deadly sins does the word accumulation uh, refer to? So accumulation, as far as I'm concerned anyway, is to gather stuff and to pile it up and to keep it. So it must be greed, which would be the seventh choice here. So you see, this is, is a fantastic little way of improving your French vocabulary if you so wish to. So anyway, we'll pick seven and we continue on. So we're after making it through that section. Good. So again, we press any key and we move on through. We can admire the artwork as we go, if we so wish. Ah, I skipped past the inverted cross there. Anyway, what harm? But here you'd see we're rising up a level now. So we're getting closer to that end guy's room where we have to knock before we go in, as far as I can tell anywhere from what he was saying. But um, ah, there we go. He's after getting us once. So if that happens, I think, two more times, it's pretty much game over for us. So these guys kind of get harder 
to beat as the game progresses in that we don't have as much time to actually shoot him. See, between shootings. So there we go. And we we'll just keep on shooting this guy. But again, it's only three keys that we're using. We're using left and right to get to him. And then we're using fire then to shoot at him. Now it says here that if we want to go straight, so through this door, we press D. Otherwise, we press any other key, I suppose, to go over this way. So you need to make the right choice. I'm not going to tell you what I did there to try and keep the game kind of fresh for you. But if you make the wrong choice, it's more or less game over for you. So there we are. We have a little inverted pentagram on the floor and we keep on going. Again, another torch and just an awful lot, an awful lot of work after going into this game. So here we are again with this little other demon -y guy. So as far as I can tell, there's only ever kind of one demon on the screen who's against this, you know. Now, as I understand it, at the end of the game, we get to like the end boss. And from what I understand, there's a lot of work after going into this end boss guy. So he's made up of like 24 different characters. And uh, there's, there's all kinds of coding going on in there with all kinds of mathematical instructions and whatnot to defeat the guy. And uh, and there's no real slowdown. Now, I haven't gotten there, but I've heard there's no real slowdown on it, which is apparently quite an impressive feat using BASIC. But here we are at our game over screen. So it asks us, do we want to play again or not? So that is pretty much the game Evil Dungeon. So there you go. That's the game I wanted to show you. I mean, there's an awful lot of work after going into it. You can give a little donation if you wish for it on itch, or you can download it freely and just try it out yourself and I would advise you do so not only do you get to see maybe a new computer type thing or emulator that you've never used before but you'll also see how games more or less run on it and this is a game that was written only this year it's only been out for like the last two weeks so that is pretty much that for today and remember if you haven't played Bob and the alien fireflies yet then what the heck are you doing with your time get on over to itch and check that out too and uh, we'll talk to you very soon. So until then, we will see you. Bye-bye.